Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. So it's root, root, root for the home team. They don't win, it's a shame. It's one, two, three strikes right. This electronic field trip is brought to you by the Best Buy Children's Foundation. Seriously, I saw it in the classic Kevin Costner movie. Yeah, the voice said, if you build it, he will come. Yeah, and then like all these famous baseball players came walking out of the corn. So here we are with lots of corn in the middle of Iowa. No crazy voices and no famous baseball players. Are you sure we're not missing something? Wait, I think I see something moving in the corn. It's baseball Hall of Famer Ozzy Smith. Wow! Oh, What's going on? Wow! Ozzy, um, Ozzy, what are you doing at a cornfield? Well, all of us Hall of Famers take turns out here. When people come to the Field of Dreams, they expect to see one of us. Babe Ruth called in sick today, so I'm filling in for him. Cool. Yeah, Babe owes me one. You know, I was planning on being back in Brooklyn today for the electronic field trip. I'll be lucky if I make it back to Brooklyn at all. Oh yeah, the baseball and pop culture field trip. Yes, baseball and pop culture. I don't have to tell you guys that we're standing on a field that was made famous by a movie. But we're gonna explore baseball throughout our culture. Movies, music, books, and ballparks. It's all around us. Cool, well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Hmm, do you guys know how to get back to Brooklyn? That corn only works one way. Hey everybody and welcome to this afternoon's program or this morning's program depending upon where you're watching us right now. This is a live broadcast. I'm Jeff Arnett from the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York and joining me today is my co-host. And your name? Kelsey Watkins. Kelsey, tell us where you go to school at. I go to school at um, Burris Laboratory School and I live in Muncie, Indiana and I'm in fifth. I'm in fifth grade and I'm 10 years old. Well, Kelsey, it's great to have you as my co-host for today's program. A lot of great things are going to be happening on today's show. I'm Jeff. This is Kelsey. You can call us J and K. We're kind of right in the middle of the alphabet, just like we're going to be right in the middle of today's program. Right, Kelsey? A lot of exciting things happening. We're going to kind of help you feel your way around the show, learn all these different topics that are taking place, introduce you to a lot of special guests, including Hall of Fame shortstop Ozzie Smith. He's back with us on this year's electronic field trip. Great things, Kelsey, right? So uh, what is an electronic field trip? Maybe that's a good question that we want to start off answering, do you think? Yeah. Okay, an electronic field trip is a program just like you're watching where you're in your classrooms, we're coming to you live via satellite, cable television, maybe public television, and uh, perhaps you're watching on the internet, but we're bringing you to a place that you probably have never been before. And in this place, we're gonna help you explore a topic that pertains to a lot of different things that you're learning in your classroom. So Kelsey, that begs the question, where are we today? We're in Brooklyn, New York at Keyspin Park by Coney Island where the Cyclones play. And the, cyclone, the Cyclones are called the Cyclones because um, 
and the roller coaster that Coney Island staff built. So there's a world famous amusement park just over the left field wall here, right? And just over the right field wall, what is there on the other side of the fence? Um, there's an ocean, like, and there's a boardwalk. Oh, down by the boardwalk. Boardwalk. That song, right? So we've got the ocean over the right field wall. We've got Coney Island, a world famous amusement park that's just over the left field wall. It's a beautiful day here in Brooklyn. The sun is shining bright, a little bright for us, isn't it? We wish we had sunglasses, didn't we? Yeah. So kids watching back in their classrooms, Kelsey, who can't be with us here today in Brooklyn, live and in person, how might they participate in the broadcast? Well, you can call our bank, our bank of experts, and then you can get on our website, or you can call right now on air. Okay, so they can call in their questions live on TV, and we'll answer them for them. Yes. And if you want to enter your questions on the website via email, you can do that too because we've got a bank of experts back at the Baseball Hall of Fame and in other parts of the country as well who will try to answer those questions about today's program. So what are we going to be learning about, Kelsey? We're going to be learning about pop culture and baseball. What is pop culture? That's a hard question, isn't it? Yeah. It's not easy to define what pop culture is. A little bit easier to understand when you look at baseball and pop culture because baseball is so popular, but we're going to be looking at a lot of different things, again, that are right in line with what you're studying in your classrooms. Might be language arts, might be music, might be art class. A lot of different things are going to come up in today's program, but because pop culture, Kelsey, is a little bit tricky to define, we went to some students just like you and we asked them, what do they think pop culture is? Let's listen to their answers. What do you think pop culture is? Different kinds of people with different beliefs and traditions. This is pop culture is popular. The culture of America today. Modern dancing and music. Different dances or celebrations. People come together and have fun. I think it's VH1 and CNN. Pop culture mixed together. Culture that has to do with music. The culture of baseball. Pop culture is what's popular today. Those are their definitions and their answers, but now it's your turn. Because on our website, you can print out this special page that goes along with today's program. It's called Your Turn. Throughout the broadcast today, Kelsey, we're going to be giving everybody examples and maybe even a few definitions of pop culture. And the kids can fill these in while they're watching back in their classrooms. And at the end of the show, you can go to the website, enter your answers, and that will print out a customized, personalized story that helps you better understand what pop culture is. So Kelsey, a lot of different ways for kids back in their classrooms to be involved in today's program. So we've got kind of a pop culture adventure that we're getting ready to embark on. Is that right? The sun is bright here in Brooklyn. Where are we going to start our program at, Kelsey, today? Who should we go to first? Uh, I think we need to go to Andy Jarenko and his friend, Isaiah. Isaiah and Andy Jarenko are up in the top deck here at Keyspan Park in Brooklyn overlooking Coney Island. Let's go to them now to start today's broadcast. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Isaiah. I go. To, I live in Muncie, Indiana, and I go to Muncie Burris. And I'm here with artist Annie Jurinko, and today we'll be talking about art that is involved with baseball. Hi, uh, I'm Andy Jurinko, and uh, with Isaiah here today, we're we're actually trying to do some paintings on the spot here with uh, all our friends from Indiana and Brooklyn, New York. Uh, trying to do some pictures of this great little ballpark. Well, it's not little, but it's, uh, it's a nice ballpark. Uh, and uh, we've got the Atlantic Ocean in the background. and We've got a lot of things going on here, so it's a, it's a difficult assignment, really, to come out here and just start in on doing something like this. And uh, I think the, uh, the kids here have done a marvelous job of just focusing in on parts of the ballpark and working in, in the outdoors, a little bit of wind factor today up here in the upper deck, but uh, I think it's looking great. Okay, Andy, are these some of your pictures that you've painted? Yeah, these are uh, just a, f a couple right back here. One that we're looking at right now is an aerial view of old Yankee Stadium. That's the way the ballpark looked uh, from 
Oh, the early 20s, uh, well, they made some revisions when it was first built, but during the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, this is the way the ballpark looked. It was uh, had a grand facade at the roof line, and it was uh, one of the biggest outfields in Major League history, um, 461 feet to center field, and it held around 60,000 people, and this is where some of the greatest teams in baseball history played, from Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig up to Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, and the current Yankees, Derek Jeter and company. So it, it was renovated in 1974 and five, and it's the new version is really uh, going to be coming down pretty soon itself. They're going to be trying to reproduce this ballpark a block or two away from the current ballpark. Okay, Andy, how does do you how does baseball inspire so many people around this world? Well, I think uh, since baseball is really the game that America grew up with back in the Civil War and continues to be emotionally involved in it on a day-to-day -day basis. The one great thing about baseball is it, it's played, you know, every day of the week, basically, from April through October. And uh, it, it's a really an inspiring subject matter. It, it, you get emotionally involved in it and just the look of the game. Isaiah, the, the look of the fields, the look of the players, it's something you can really get into. Uh, so now it's your turn. Okay. Everybody back in the classroom, it's your turn. Trying to get out the pencil and paper because it's your turn to start drawing and painting pictures. And now down to Ozzie Smith. How do you, how do you get started when you draw the ballpark? Well, we saw today that we start by just getting a, an impression of the overall feeling of the place and then I guess you have to focus on some part of the ballpark so most of the time I kind of look around and sort of figure out where the infield is going to go and and then I work from there uh, sometimes it's the outfield fence and sometimes it's actually the buildings in the background that get get me started but it's it varies with every ballpark and every position that you're in okay TV is a big part of pop pop culture so we gave Ozzy Smith his own TV show let's go watch round first and then slide the two outs in the bottom of the nine golden gloves and back flips bases covered with Ozzy Smith hi everybody I'm Ozzy Smith and I'm Emily Bars from Dubuque Iowa the co-host. We're here uh, to talk about the impact that media has on baseball. They tell me recently you went over to Sports Illustrated. Yeah. And talk to us about what you did over there and, and, and what you learned about the media. Well, we were able to see how they go about writing an article and how they choose the photos and put together the layout and everything. All the different parts of putting together a magazine. Uh -huh. Advertising plays a big part in sports today. We have a special guest that that uh, is also here too that uh, we'd like to to introduce here in a minute. Yes, with us today we have Bob Durr, the um, managing editor of Sports Illustrated for Kids. Bob? Hey, Bob. All right. Hey, how's it Getting hey, the game started. All right, Bob, welcome, welcome. welcome. Thanks, great to, to be here. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. Here to talk about the impact that media has on sports and stuff. What, uh, what is the criteria for people when, when we talk about Sports Illustrated, uh, for instance, for kids? Uh, what do you do to, to how's the story, how does it begin? Well, what we do is we, we sit around as a staff at our magazine of writers and, and editors and designers and photographers, and we're, we're mainly a lot of sports fans, baseball fans, uh, other pro sports, and we talk about what's going on right now in sports and the athletes who are making the headlines and doing a great job in the field, and who also are doing good things in the community, and we try to decide who would be someone that our readers, who range in age from seven or eight years old all the way up to 14, 15, who would they want to read about? And that's how we decide on what stories to do. How is um, baseball portrayed in the media? Baseball is a great sport because it's, it's a sport about heroes and it's a sport about tradition and, uh, and, and athletes with great stories. And that's what we're really looking for. What, what we really do as a magazine, as a member of the media, is really we're there for, for fans who can't necessarily be at a game or go into a locker room and meet an athlete. 
So what we want to do is find out the stories that you can't read about in other places and tell those stories to kids because more often than not, those are the stories that kids are most interested in. How did you get to where you were? What did you have to overcome? How hard did you have to work? What were some of the obstacles? What were some of the things that you had to do to get to where you are? How long has uh, Sports Illustrated for Kids been around? We've been around, this is our 17th year. We actually started in 1989. 1989. You have any questions for him? How do you choose, like, how do you go about putting together an article? It's, it's a process where it's a, a whole group of people, um, designers, editors, writers, and we, once we've decided on the subject matter, be it an athlete or a topic in, in, in a sport like baseball, then we say, what's the best way to tell that story? And usually it involves going and doing an interview, and we'll send a writer, or an editor will assign that story to a writer to go and usually in, in the ballpark like this, uh, talk to the athlete and find out uh, what makes them tick. What's their story? What are they about? How did they, how did they get to where they are? Then they come back to New York here where our offices are and we, we have a finished piece of text and art is meanwhile, we, you know, we're picking photographs of that athlete, the best, most exciting action photographs or photos of them with their family that tell a story about their life off the field. And uh, we, we pull it all together, usually in four or five weeks, because we're a monthly magazine. And in that time, we're working on many stories at once, and it all comes together in an issue. Have you always personally had an interest in sports? I did. I grew up in Washington, D.C., a big sports fan, and uh, I grew up also loving to write. So when I found that there was a way for me to write and write about sports and make money for it, I was in heaven, because that was the perfect job for me. Hmm. What is it like to see yourself in a magazine? I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of weird, you know, sitting there reading about yourself. And I think we always pick up the magazine to find out whether or not it's the truth. Yeah, we always <laughs> whether or not get they get wrong, the facts, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whether or not the facts are there. But um, it, it's a great feeling. And I think that we're very fortunate sometimes when we are people that are chosen, that they choose to, to do an article on in a magazine. And uh, I, I look at it as a privilege. How would you say that all of this fits into baseball and pop culture? Well, really, what we try to do is we're a reflection of popular culture. I mean, uh, as we've been hearing, popular culture is what's popular now. And uh, for us in the magazine, we want to cover the athletes who are popular now for, for our readers who happen to be kids. Who are the athletes they want to know the most about? It wouldn't really do us a lot of good to put stories in the magazine about people that, that kids don't really care about. So uh, as a magazine and newspapers and TV, they're all trying to cover the, the most popular athletes, the hottest athletes, and trying to give you information that you might not find in other places about that athlete so you feel closer to them and understand them a little bit better as you watch a game. Any more? Do you have any more questions? Do you have anything? All right, we're going to toss it over to Jeff. Jeff, go right ahead. Thanks, Ozzy. J and K back over here behind first base. Kelsey, the phone's lines are starting to heat up. Who do we have on the line right now? Okay, we have... Um, Lana. Lana from Texas. Lana from Texas. Go right ahead with your question. Um, my question was, what common words have been added to the American language um, because of baseball? What common words have been added to the American language because of baseball? Well, you know what, Landa, there's a lot of people on the show today who you've not yet met who are going to be able to answer that question for you, but it's an excellent one. I'll take a stab at it, and uh, you'll probably hear more throughout the broadcast, words like three strikes and you're out, or I'm on deck. Those kinds of things are very common expressions in the American vernacular that really are due to baseball. Now, Ozzy, you've played for several years. You probably heard a lot of expressions out on the field as well that come from baseball, but you also hear in your everyday life. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, for me, um, as a baseball player, baseball players probably more so than in other sports uh, talk about, uh, we have a lot of cliches, of course, but we have nicknames for everybody. And, and playing on the infield, it was always, well, if I turn to double play, it's, it's ham and eggs or it, it's getting to, or if you hit a home run, it's a big fly. I mean, there's so many different uh, little, little words and antics that, that, that we use in baseball, and it's just, it, it's part of the pop culture. Lana, that was a great question. Kelsey, let's go back to the phones. Who's up next? Jackie from Indiana. Jackie from Indiana, you're on the line. Go right ahead. Um, I was having a question. Um, when did um, baseball first start? When did baseball first start? Well, you know, that's another very good question because baseball is such a part of American history. 
baseball, the first reference to it was actually in the 1790s in colonial America. It may have been played even before then as an outgrowth of some games that were common in Europe. But baseball first became a professional sport in America in the late 1860s when the Cincinnati Red Stockings became the first team that was paid to play. And then baseball as we know it really hasn't changed too much since the very early 20th century. Kelsey, we've got another call. We have Stacy from New Jersey. Stacy from New Jersey, you're up. Go ahead, Stacy from New Jersey. We're waiting for your question. Well, you know, throughout the broadcast today, there are a lot of ways that you can participate. As Kelsey told you, you can call in your questions during the show. You can also submit them at the web forum because we've got a bank of experts who are standing by to try to answer those questions for you. So now, Kelsey, there's two people, or actually three people, that we've not yet met. Where are we going to go in the ballpark? Uh, we're going to go to Casey and his friends. Casey, the mighty Casey from the famed poem Casey at the Bat, is upstairs in the press box with a couple of his friends to answer your questions. Guys, take it away. Thank you, Jeff and Kelsey. We're so happy to be here this afternoon. I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Alicia. She's from Indiana, and Eric, he's from Iowa. And we're, uh, we're happy to help you today. Eric has both a question that's come in over the web forum and some poll information from our website where we're polling those of you interested in baseball and popular culture. Take it away, Eric. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Ashley Goody. Uh, why do people like to watch baseball so much? Which I think is a pretty good question. Mm -hmm. We have our uh, person from the Hall of Fame, Gabriel Schechter. And he says, I think there are many reasons why people like to watch baseball. Uh, first, most of us have played the game and know how difficult, difficult it is to play well, so we appreciate watching the talent of the players. Second, you never know what's going to happen. So that's what he says. And uh, our poll information, uh, where do you get your baseball and, baseball and, and well, your info for baseball? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, flipping through the p newspaper is 15%. Okay. Surfing the web is 12%. Tuned in to the TV or radio is 52%, so that's pretty popular. And I don't get my news or information anywhere. That's 20%. And that's out of a total of 436 votes. So uh, you th I think you could get your uh, baseball info from the newspapers, the web, TV, radio. All those forms of media. And I guess it's good that we're on TV because that's got the highest ratings on the whole poll, right? So yeah. we're where we need to be. How about you, Alicia? Do you have a question for us today? Yes, I, yes, I do. I have Shelby from Muncie Lewis in Indiana, and she wants to know who decides on the team colors. And I think that'd be a good question for Ozzy since he played on the Cardinals. Yeah, Ozzy was a Cardinal. Can we throw that question down to Ozzy Smith? Who chose the team colors? Ah, that's a, that's a real good question. I have no idea who chose the team colors. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, uh, the colors, I, I guess, are basically chosen by uh, management. Um, management usually uh, are the ones to decide what, what, what the team colors are. And, uh, of course, I, I've always enjoyed wearing red and white, so the Cardinals the best organization in baseball. I toss it back to Tim. Okay. Either of you guys have another question you'd like to jump to right away? Uh, yes, I have one more, and it is from Ryan Radke, and we... And he wants to know who was the first team to make a triple play. Ah, the first team to make a triple play. Do we have an answer for that one? Uh, yes, we do. It was Jim Creighton of the Brooklyn Excelsiors in, on July 22nd, 1860. So Jim Creighton of Brooklyn, right here in Brooklyn in 1860, a long, long time ago. Yeah made the first triple play. That's great. Jim Creighton was really one of the first star baseball pitchers of all time. And like uh, Jeff Arnett told you earlier, we're going to baseball, Buzz Beamer's baseball brain blast cartoon. And Buzz, of course, is the mascot for SI for Kids magazine. Well, welcome back, everybody. Thank you, Buzz. Thanks, Casey, Alicia, and Eric up in the press box. We're glad that you're back with us. 
Uh, Kelsey and I were thinking about going over to the beach, but we decided to stick around for the show. And it's a good thing because we've got Aza and Janisa from Public School 329. Aza, you tell me that you've been on TV before, is that right? Yes. So you're kind of a star, right? <laughs> All right, this is uh, easy for you to be on TV. Yeah. All right, now Kelsey has a Buzz Beamer baseball brain blast question. That's a mouthful. All right, kind of like eating a big hot dog from Nathan's. Mm -hmm. And she's going to ask you this question, and we're going to see how well you do. And no matter what your answer is, I've got a prize for you. So, Aza, go right ahead. Right, here's the question. Kelsey, you ask it first. Okay. How many hot dogs were sold in Major League... Le legal... Legal what? Major League ballparks. Major League ballparks in 2004. Aza, how many hot dogs were sold in Major League ballparks in 2004? Mm -hmm. I, I think 26. 26. Hot dogs. 26 hot dogs? Add a million to that, and you've got the right answer, Ozza. 26 million hot dogs were sold at Major League Ballparks in 2004. How many of those did you eat? <laughs> Not 25 million, I hope. No. No. Aza, thank you. That was very good. I've got a book for you from Dan Gutman. That's Hanna Me, which is a baseball card adventure. Now we've got some callers on the line, Kelsey, I think, who are on the phone waiting to answer their questions. And we'll come back to Janice in just a moment. Go right ahead. Okay, we have Katie from Indiana. What's your question? Is baseball more popular n now or when it was first invented? Is baseball more popular now or when it was first invented? You know, the mighty Casey also doubles as the director of research at the Baseball Hall of Fame. He gets hundreds of thousands of questions from kids like you all around the country. Casey, what do you think? Is baseball more popular now than it was when it was invented? Well, that's a good question, Jeff. I'd say it's kind of popular in different ways. You know, when baseball was invented, we did not have television. We did not have newspapers, really, at the very beginning of baseball. They, we had papers, but they weren't covering baseball. We didn't have radio, and we didn't have internet. So today, you can get baseball news a lot faster than you could in the 1850s and 1860s. And of course, there are a lot more people today. So I guess I'm answering my own question and thinking, yes, it's more popular because there's about four times more people alive today in the United States than when baseball began. Casey, thank you for that answer. Let's go back to the phones. Who's up next, Kelsey? Maggie from Indiana, go ahead with your question. Maggie from Indiana, you're on the line. Um, why was baseball made? Why was baseball made? You know, that really goes back to the origins of the game. Kelsey, I would guess it's so you and I would have something to do in our free time, because we like to play baseball, don't we? Yeah. But eventually it became much more than a pastime, and now it's a professional sport. Athletes get paid a pretty good amount of money to play it, and we pay to go watch them play, don't we, Kelsey? Let's go back to the phones. That was a great question, Maggie. We've got another question on the line. You want to do another buzz question? All right, we've got Janisa, is that right? Janisa from Public School 329. You got another question for us, Kelsey? Yes. Okay, let's go back to another Buzz Beamer baseball brain blast. Okay. What position on the baseball field is known as the hot corner? The hot corner. Janisa, what position on the baseball field is known as the hot corner? What's your guess? Everybody watching back in your classroom, if you know the answer, you can shout it out for Janisa. What do you think it is? Home base. Home base. Well, you're 90 feet away. The correct answer is? Third base. Third base. Very good. Third base is the hot corner. It feels pretty hot right here in the stands right now, doesn't yes. it, Kelsey? Yes. All right, Janisa, very good. I've got a book for you from Dan Gutman. That's Abner and Me about the beginnings of baseball, another baseball card adventure. Good job on that one. Let's go back to the phones, Kelsey. Who's up next? We have Hunter from Texas. Go on. Hunter from Texas. You're on the line. Um, uh, why is baseball considered the American sport instead of football? Boy, Ozzy, you played baseball for 19 seasons with the Cardinals. You got to see it firsthand down on the field, all of those thousands of fans who watched you every day. Why would you think baseball is considered the national pastime more than football? Well, I think it's a national pastime because uh, it's one of those things that families can do when you go and picnic. Everybody can participate. So it very easily became a, a, a way of life, a part of our culture. Okay. These are great questions that are coming on the phone. Thank you, Ozzy, for that answer. Thanks for the question. And we've got one more, Kelsey. We have Sam from Indiana. Go ahead with your question. Hi, this is Sam Paul from Yorktown, Indiana. And I was 
wondering what team was the first to be broadcasted on t live TV for Major League Baseball? Live TV, that's an excellent question for Casey, also the Director of Research at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Let's head back up to the web form. Casey, can you help us with that one? Sure, Jeff, the question was, when was baseball first on live TV? I believe that was the question. The yes. first live baseball game on TV was in 1939, right here in New York. It was not Major League Baseball, it was Columbia University versus Princeton. And just the next year, the first uh, Major League Baseball game was on live as well. So about 1939, 1940. TV really was around before World War II, but not very many people could afford it until after World War II. Kelsey, we're on TV right now, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, this is live TV. Who are we going to throw it to next in today's program? I think we're going to um, throw it to Andy Strasberg. He's going to talk about baseball history with his co-host, Caleb. Go right ahead, guys. Hi, I'm Andy Strasberg, and this is my baseball buddy, Caleb Pine. Caleb? Um, Where are you from? I'm from Albany, Indiana. Okay, and what grade are you in? I'm fifth grade. All right, now, I collect baseball memorabilia, and I've been collecting baseball memorabilia for 50 years, and I'm 57 years old. I love to watch it, I love to collect baseball cards, listen to baseball music, watch baseball movies, pop culture, and baseball, boy, throughout the last 100, 150 years, it's been all over the place. So don't you also collect dot from different uh, stadiums? I do. Probably one of the most unusual things that I collect is dirt from different ballparks. Now, I know many of you are laughing right now, but what I've done is I've, gotten, I've, I've taken little pieces of dirt after a significant baseball game in the history of baseball. And I've probably got three or four different uh, samples of dirt from significant baseball games. What's your favorite one? Well, uh, the San Diego Padres played the New York Mets in Monterey, Mexico in 1996. It was the very first time that Major League, uh, Major League Baseball played an in-season regular game outside of the United States or Canada. So after that game, uh, I went and I got some dirt for my collection. So do you think if you had spare time, you could name all the teams of baseball? Oh, I can name all the teams. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to enjoy what we are in, and that is Brooklyn. And we're going to ask, we're going to ask some folks from the. Uh, in fact, why don't you introduce this young lady? This is Anna. Hi, Anna. Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Hi, Hi Anna. Why don't you step in here sure. real close and tell us, you are work in the front office in the community relations? I'm the community relations manager for the Brooklyn Cyclones here. Um, you know, you're not the only one who collects dirt from different stadiums. We actually have a museum here that talks all about the Brooklyn Dodgers, and someone collected some dirt from the famous Ebbets Field, and they gave it to us to display in our museum. So you're not the only one who likes no, it. There's probably a few yeah. of us out there. <laughs> tell us about this ballpark. It is spectacular. It's magnificent. It is situated right next to the Atlantic Ocean. Tell us about the community sure. and the involvement. This is a great ballpark. We've been here since 2001. And really, what we do here is we work on a lot of community and educational outreach programs here. And we really try to tie in with everything going on in Coney Island. Of course, the amusement park and the beach and the boardwalk and the great community that we really have right here in our backyard in Coney Island. So we do a lot of outreach, getting the community involved and really getting all of Brooklyn and New York City involved with what's happening at Keyspan Park. Not just our baseball games, but all sorts of events that we have here. So how long, have you, how long did it take to build a, a Keyspan Park? Keyspan Park took about a year to build. Um, we first opened in June of 2001, and we just celebrated our fifth anniversary here at the ballpark. And how do you account for the success? Uh, the attendance is incredible. The merchandise that you sell is not just to the immediate area. It's all over the place. Well, you know, we have a ton of fans, and it goes back to the history of baseball in Brooklyn and how many people, close to 3 million people living in Brooklyn. And so we have a pretty huge fan base, and we've been lucky to break attendance records the first five years that we've been in Brooklyn. Great. We've got a call from Lola from New Jersey. Lola, I don't know if you can hear us, but if you've got a uh, question, go ahead with it. Lola from New Jersey. 
Lola, we know that you've got a question and you're calling from New Jersey. What, what is your question? The, the question was, when was the first baseball card invented? And that actually was 1886. Baseball cards have been around a long time. And in 1886, they were actually photographs of players. And those photographs were very skinny, but very thick. And they were put in tobacco products. And those tobacco products, it was used as a promotion. So if people had to make a choice and what they were gonna purchase, which tobacco product, this particular company, Old Judge Cigarettes, were hoping that you would buy their product as opposed to their competitors because in each pack, you got a baseball card. We're now going to go to the next Buzz Beamer cartoon for your enjoyment. everybody, Kelsey and I are back here in the stands, and Kelsey, before we go to the next Buzz Beamer Brain Blast baseball question, who's on the line? Ben from Texas. Ben from Texas. Go right ahead, sir. Ben from Texas. Ben from Texas, are you on the line? I've been to Texas. Let's go now to our audience because we've got some folks who are going to try some of our Buzz Beamer baseball brain blast questions. Kelsey has picked them out. We've got Adam who is in the fourth grade at Public School 329. We've got Anthony who is in the second grade and we've got Taja who is in the fifth grade. Is that right? Did I get everybody correct? It's hard to remember all those names but Kelsey and I are doing our best. Kelsey, what's your first question? Okay, for you. How many books has Dan, author Dan Gutman published? Okay, Adam, how many books has Dan Gutman published? What's your guess? Make a guess. Oh, 50. 50. Is that your guess, Adam? Whoa, he's pretty close, isn't he, Kelsey? What's yeah. the correct answer? 58. 58. Very good, Adam. We've got a Dan Gutman baseball card adventure for you. Okay, let's go over here to Anthony now. Anthony, here's a question from Kelsey. Well, what Hall of Famer once said, I always thought that re record would stand until it was broken. Kind of a funny statement, isn't it? I always thought that record would stand until it was broken. Can you guess what Hall of Famer that was, Anthony? Played here in New York. Everybody back in your classrooms, if you think you know the answer to that question, here's your chance. Shout it out. Help, help Anthony. Take a guess, Anthony. He played for the New York Yankees. Famous catcher named... Derek Jeter? Not Derek Jeter, but Yogi Berra. But that's close. We'll give you a Babe Ruth book by Dan Gutman. That's Babe and me, another baseball card adventure. Kelsey, we've got a caller on the line. It's Leah from California. Leah from California. Go right ahead. Leah from California. Aaliyah from California. Aaliyah. Go right ahead, Aaliyah from California. When did the first when did the first baseball game start? When did the first baseball game start? Uh, let's go up to the Casey, Casey, Mighty Casey in the web form. Casey, any idea when the first baseball game was first played? Yes. In fact, the first baseball game that anybody knows of was played right near here in Manhattan in 1823. That's currently the earliest baseball game we know of. It was played down by where Madison Square Garden is today. So a long, long time ago, but right here in New York City. Who would have guessed? Taja, we're going to come back to you in just a few minutes for another Buzz Beamer baseball brain blast question. Have you ever wanted to be in the movies? Yes. Yeah. You think you'd like to be in a movie someday? Yeah. Andy Strasberg and Caleb are standing by on the field. They're going to talk about baseball and the movies.
Remember now, we're talking about pop culture and all the things that go into making things popular with American culture. You can't leave movies out, that's for sure. Over the years, almost a hundred years, there have been movies made with the subject of baseball. Have you seen many movies about baseball? Yes, I have. What was the last movie you saw about baseball? Can last you remember? Movie, probably the uh, old, the older version of the bad, bad news bears. Bad, bad news bears. Perfect example. Well, we've got some uh, clips of movies, and we're going to share them with you right now. And I'm going to give you some of the information pertaining to those movies. The first movie we're going to see. The first movie we're going to see is It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland. Now, the premise of this movie is that a professor, Professor Simpson, who was teaching at Norworth University, had developed, had developed some type of chemical to put on a baseball that would make it repellent against wood. And so he then decided that he was going to become a pitcher. I mean, what better thing could you use on a baseball other than a repellent against wood? Now watch this. Special effects. Boy, it worked. Boy, it seems like sometimes it seems like sometimes there are pitchers out there who are have that special repellent. Would you agree, Caleb? Yes, I would. Okay. The next movie that we're gonna see. Why don't we run that clip? This is the Babe Ruth. Uh, Babe Ruth starred in a movie with Gary Cooper, and it was the Pride of the Yankees. And in this particular scene, everyone is taking a bite out of a hat, and they're on a train going from one city to another city. And the last person to take a bite would be Lou Gehrig, played by Gary Cooper. And look whose hat it is. Come in. There he is, taking a bite. And Babe Ruth plays himself in the movie. He turns around and... Why you Pretty exciting stuff. Well, here's one of my favorites. Uh, coming up now, it's the Jackie Robinson movie. The Jackie Robinson story. Now, this was done about three years after Jackie had entered into Major League Baseball. Now, the reason why, to me, this is so significant is there are no actors playing Jackie Robinson. That's Jackie Robinson playing himself. He did, in the movie, all the baseball scenes. And you could see the talent that he has and why he was so good. Now, at the end of the movie, he delivers a very special speech. And here is that speech. And he talks about how great it is that baseball has given him a chance in the United States to excel in the game of baseball, the game that he loved. And I'm sure it's worth defending. I can't speak for any 50. Now, the next movie is, I believe it's A League of Their Own. And we've got a great clip from A League of Their Own, which was about the All-American Baseball Girls team. This took place in the 1940s. Now, watch this catch by Gina Davis, who was playing the catcher. Whoa, what a catch. What do you think, Caleb? She must be good. Pretty good. Well, that was such a great catch in the movie that they caught it on a picture and they put it on the cover of a magazine. And that also is part of popular culture. When baseball subjects go on the cover of magazines, that's part of everyday culture. Whew. All right, the next movie I think is your one of your favorites. Why don't you introduce it? Uh, Do you remember? No. It's a field of dreams. Oh, yeah. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good it could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Boy, that was a uh, very dramatic part in, in the movie. 
Okay, we're standing on the field here in Brooklyn with the greatest shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball, and we're going to toss it back to Ozzie Smith. Go. Round first and then slide. Two outs in the bottom of the nine. Golden gloves and backflips. Bases covered with Ozzie Smith. Thanks, Andy and Caleb. You know, language plays such a big part in the, in the game of baseball. Emily, why don't you give us some examples of how language has become a part of our pop, pop culture? Well, often we use phrases from baseball in everyday language that we wouldn't, that just have come from baseball. Like, such as, it's my turn at bat, when it's your turn for something, or that was a home run after success. Ah. You also might say, when surprised, caught off base. Ah. And all of those have come from baseball. Good, good. But well, we have some people with us today that, um, you know, I guess is, it's, it's one of my favorite things because when I was growing up, I used to get up on Saturday morning and watch, uh, watch these guys on television all the time. Why don't you introduce um, our guest here? Well, today we have Gil Palmer and Luz Ciara playing Abbott and Costello in their routine, Who's On First? And while you watch the routine, it's your turn to figure out who's on first. We have a worksheet that you can print out and get a pencil, and you can fill in the names of each of the positions as they go through the routine. When we're done, we'll post the answers so you can see if you got it right. So now we have who's on first. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Anybody see my friend Abbott around? Hey, Abbott! Hey, guys, you see Abbott? I don't know. Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Hey, Abbott! Hey, you! Oh, oh, hi! Costello, what are you making so much noise about? I'm just happy to be here, Abbott. I'm happy to be here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't you read the sign? Why, what's wrong? There's no smoking allowed on the field. Who's smoking? You have a cigar in your mouth. I got my shoes on, but I'm not walking. Oh, pick that up. <laughs> pick it up. <laughs> don't desecrate the baseball field. You just get out here, ready to smack me all over the place. I don't know. Right. What are you doing with that bat? You know, I love baseball. Everybody loves baseball. I understand that this year they made you the manager of the Cooperstown baseball team. That's right. I'm the manager of the Hall of Fame baseball team up in Cooperstown, New York. Well, can you tell me the fellas' names on your team so I see them in the ballpark and maybe out on the street? I can say hello to them. Certainly. I'll be very happy to introduce you to boys. You know, Lou, nowadays they give these ball players very peculiar names. What do you mean? Funny names? Nicknames. Pet names. Okay, tell me the guys' names on your team. All right, we'll start with the infield, all right? Okay. We have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know what's on third. What's Wait a second. I thought you said you were going to tell me the guys' names. Well, I just told you the names. You didn't tell me nothing yet, brother. Go ahead. Tell me the guys' names on your team. We have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know what's on third. Now, wait a minute. You're the manager of this team. Yes. And you're all the fellas' names. Well, I should. Okay, then tell me who's playing first. Yes. I mean, the fellas' name. Well, that's it. That's who. Yes. So, you're going to tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy got a first base. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I'm, not I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. Well, that's whose name. Yes. So, you're going to tell me. Well, that's it. That's who. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, no, what's the fellow's name he got on first? Now, don't move him around. What's playing second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third now. Wait a minute now! How'd I get on third base? Well, you mentioned the third baseman's name. I did? Yes. Okay, then who do I say is playing over on third? Why do you insist on putting who over on third? Now, who am I putting over there? Yes, but he doesn't belong there. So then what's the fellow's name you want on third? What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We go back at third again. Look, Abbott, I still don't know any guy's names on the team. Will you stay on one base and don't go off it? Go ahead. Now, look, you pay these baseball players a lot of money to play for your team? Certainly. Cooperstown's very generous. All right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. Well, why not Lou, the man's entitled to it? Who is? Yes. I <laughs> in fact, sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. Look, all those, what's the fellow's name you give the money to? What's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> Look, when you, when you give the guy his money, right? Right. You get a receipt from the man? Certainly we get a receipt. All right, now look, when a first baseman signed a receipt, right. how do he sign his name? Who? The guy has signed a receipt. Who? The guy has signed a receipt. Who? The guy has signed a receipt. That's how he signs it. Who? Yes. I don't know, what's the fellow's name that signed a receipt? What signs his own? Who signs his own? Who signs his? I, oh, look, all those, what's the fellow's name he got on first? What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. Look, when a first baseman signed a receipt, right? Yes. How does name on the receipt look to you? Who? To you? Who? To you? Who? To you? That's it. That's who? Right. I don't know oh, what's the first name we got on first. What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. 
Look, you got an outfield. Certainly we have an outfield. All right, tell me left fielder's name. Why? I know, I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Now, tell me who's playing left field. Now, listen, who Stay is playing? Stay out of the infield. Hold on, what's left fielder's name? What's on second? I don't know. Third base. I know left fielder's name. Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now you know the ball players' names just as well as I do. I do, huh? Uh huh? All right, you got a pitcher on your team. Now wouldn't this be a fine team without a pitcher on it? It's a fine team already. All right, tell me the pitcher's name. Tamara. You don't want to tell me today. I'm telling you, man. Then go ahead. Tamara. What time? What time? What? What time tomorrow? You tell me who's pitching. Now listen, who is not pitching? I'll who? break your arm and say who's on first. I don't know what the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. You got a catcher on your team? Yes, we have a catcher. All right, tell me the catcher's name. Today. Today. Right. And tomorrow's pitching. That's right. Who we got a bunch of days on his team? Today, tomorrow. You know, I'm going to catch you too. So they tell me. I like to stay behind the plate and do some fancy catching, and the uh, heavy he gets up. Right. How he bunts the ball. He bunts the ball. So, me, being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy at first base, so I pick up the ball and I throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Low. That's all you have to do. So, throw the ball at first base. Right. Now, who's got it? Naturally. Look, Abbott, if I throw a ball first base, somebody's got to get it. Now, who's got it? Naturally. Who has it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Okay, so I pick up the ball and I throw it naturally. No, and no. He... You pick up the ball and you throw it to who? Naturally. That's right. Well, that's what I said. You're not saying that. I said I throw the ball to naturally. But you don't. I throw it to who? Naturally. That's what I'm saying, Abbott. I throw the ball first base, now who's got it? Naturally. You ask me. You throw the ball to first base, and who's got it? Naturally. Right. Same as you. I throw the ball first base, who's got it? Naturally. Who has it? Naturally. He better get it. Hmm. Now the last guy gets up at bat and hits the ball. So guy at first base, he runs to second base. Who, naturally, picks up the ball and throws the what? What throws the I don't know. I don't hold it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Could be. Another guy gets up at bat and hits a long fly ball because... Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What did you just say? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's a shortstop. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna belt you one, brother. Come over here. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey. Hello. How you guys doing? That guy makes me mad. Does he make you mad? I'm going home <laughs> to my mom. Uh, take it easy. Take what it easy. <laughs> now, I think it's a pleasure. How you How you doing? Okay. Abby? All right. Hello. 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 How are you? Good. Hello. All right, now we're, we're trying to we're trying to figure out, yeah, who's on first, what's on second. Because, why is, where? No, I. You know what? You're trying to figure it out. I've been trying to figure it out since 1936. That guy <laughs> makes me mad. <laughs> you guys stay my first habit. Who? The guy at first. That's it. That's who. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, <laughs> how did you guys decide on this routine? Well, we uh, we always loved the routine and. Uh, a long time ago, uh, we independently learned it, and then we met, and we, we're doing it now for a while. It's a great Abbott and Costello routine, and it's great Americana. Great. Would you say one so? One of my favorites. One of my favorite routines. Thank you, sir. All right. All we're right. Done. We've got the. We're going to post the answers for you, so you can check how you did on your sheet. Okay. Give us the right answers here now. Okay. As we go for. Who's on first? Right. I got that right. Okay. Okay. What's on? Who's on second? No, What's no. What's on second? No. What's on second? That's the guy's name. Why? Oh, okay. Shortstop is why. Shortstop is. Is why? Why? No. No. I don't give I, a darn. I don't give a darn. So you don't give a darn. Sure. Oh, okay. Give us all the answers here. Who's on first? That's correct, sir. Who? I thought who was on second. No, no, no. What oh. are you doing? You're a spit of that guy over there. Okay. All, all right. right. Oh. You have us now thoroughly confused. Yes. Me too. I don't know. <laughs> Who plays where? Who plays no, 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 he's out of the game. He, he's who's out, out of the game? Yeah, okay. he's a, he they was trained him the They sent him down the minor. Oh, that's the end of him. <laughs> we got to do a new routine now. Huh, no, no. All right, well, I hope you guys in the classroom got it right. Thank okay. you, guys. I hope Thank you guys you had a good much. time. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now back to Jeff and Kelsey with more questions. Emily Ozzie, Abbott and Costello, thank you. I don't know what's going on down there on the field. Do you guys? Whoa. Thoroughly confused. All right, but we've got more callers on the line. Kelsey, who's on first? Matthew from Indiana. Matthew from Indiana, go right ahead. Why did they put bubblegum in baseball cards? Why did they put bubblegum in baseball cards? None other than Andy Strasberg is qualified to answer I that question. That question, sir. Well, baseball cards, now you've got to remember that baseball cards uh, were the free part, and they, the gum is what they were tr actually trying to sell. 
So the premium or the added value were the baseball cards and the gum came first. They were trying to sell gum and then they added the baseball cards. Great question. Okay, Kelsey, what's on next? Tamara from Indiana, go ahead. Tamara from Indiana, your question. Um, how many, how many baseball teams is there in the ma major leagues? Boy, there's so many of them now, it's hard to keep track of anymore. How many teams? Tim Wiles, Casey, up in the research center. Jeff, there are currently 30 Major League Baseball teams. That's about twice as many as when Major League Baseball started back in 1876. And, of course, there are two left right now in the, uh, uh, three left right now in the postseason. On their way to the World Series. Mm -hmm. Scott from Indiana, your question. Go ahead, Scott. What? two teams were the first to play against each other? What two teams were the first to play against each other? That's kind of a hard one to answer, Scott, because there were so many teams in the 1800s that did play against each other. At that time, obviously, there weren't as many teams in the northeastern part of the United States, but uh, there were some great teams uh, during that era, and you can find out more, or you can ask that question of our bank of experts at our web forum by submitting that question online. Let's go back to the phones now. Kelsey, who's on next? Ben from Texas. Ben from Texas. Your question is? When was the first baseball game played in Texas? Oh, when was the first baseball game played in Texas? I've got to give that one to the mighty Casey up in the research center. Casey, any idea on that one? I tell you, Jeff, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're crossing signals with us up here. Texas, we'd love to know the answer to that question. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to ask, like Jeff did on the last question, that someone type that into the email forum so that the experts at the Hall of Fame can look it up. You know, the great baseball player and manager Casey Stengel said, it's true, it's true, you could look it up. And this may be a case where we're going to have to look it up because I don't happen to know that one off the top of my head either. Okay, Ben, thank you for your question. Kelsey, who's on next? We, we have Eddie from New Jersey. Eddie from nearby New Jersey, your question. Go ahead, Eddie in New Jersey. Baseball team was the most World Series. Eddie's question is, which baseball team has won the most World Series? That's a good question, Eddie. I don't know the exact number, but the obvious answer has got to be, anybody here know? The New York Yankees. Very good. All right, Kelsey, let's go back to the phones. We have Adam from Indiana. Adam in Indiana, your question. What was the first baseball diamond ever built? The first baseball diamond ever built. Casey, can you help me with that? I think there's a ballpark in Massachusetts that maybe is the oldest ballpark that's still in existence today. Is that right? Yes, the, uh, the ballpark in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, uh, which is a nice old wooden ballpark, is the oldest one currently in use by a professional baseball team. But I think for the first baseball diamond built in the United States, we'd probably be here in Brooklyn, Brooklyn or Eastern, excuse me, Western Long Island. But the, it was so long ago that I don't think we know which one it was, Jeff. Okay. Casey, thanks for that question. We've run out of time for other questions right now, though we're going to come back to the phones in just a few minutes. Taja, thank you for uh, sticking with us here. Joshua is with me from Public School 329. Joshua, you say that you're a baseball expert, is that right? Okay, in a few minutes, we're going to come back to Andy Strasberg and Caleb, who are going to talk about the tradition of trading baseball cards. I'm going to give you a pack of baseball cards. And right now, are we going to go back up to the web forum to see how they're doing up there as they're monitoring our website with the questions that are coming in for the Bank of Experts? Well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Eric and Alicia are here, and we're getting lots of good questions on the website. And here is the address appearing on the screen if you'd like to type in further questions. I'm going to give this over to Eric. He's got some good information and a question for you, too. Uh, one of our first questions uh, from Miss Buckle. Uh, her question. When were the White Sox last in the World Series, and who beat them? And we all know that they are now in the World Series. So uh, the answer from Russell Walensky from the uh, Basel Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. The last time Chicago White Sox appeared in the World Series was in 1959, when they lost the Los Angeles Dodgers four games to two. Okay, and actually in 1959, they were a lot like this year's team. They hustled, they stole bases, and they were called the Go-Go Sox. I understand we're going to send it back down to Jeff Arnett on the field at this point. Jeff, take it away. All right, Casey, thanks. Kelsey and I kind of moving around the stands here, getting to know all the kids from Public School 329 in Brooklyn. 
And uh, we're gonna go now to Andy Strasberg, who's sitting right here next to us, and Caleb question, also. Question. Do we have another question on the phone though before we go to Andy and Caleb? Andrea yep. from Massachusetts. Alexandria from Massachusetts. Oh, you've got a better ear than I do. Alexandria from Massachusetts. Hi, this is Alexandra, and my question is, what is baseball doing to help those recovering from hurricanes Katrina and Rita? What is baseball doing to help rebuild from the two hurricanes that struck the Gulf Coast just within the last few weeks? Well, that's a very good question, Alexandria, because Major League Baseball is doing a lot. As you know, many of the ballplayers who are playing in the Major Leagues today, as well as former ballplayers like Hall of Famer Ozzie Smith, are from that part of the country. So ballplayers and Major League Baseball and its teams are being very generous today to try to help rebuild cities like New Orleans and those in Mississippi and Alabama that might have suffered from the extreme conditions created by those devastating earthquakes that we'd heard so much about in the news in recent weeks. All right, I think we're ready now to go to Andy Strasberg. And Caleb, uh, before we head up to Andy and Caleb, let's head all the way back up to the top of Keyspan Park to check in with Andy Jarenko and see how they're doing with the painting going on up there. Andy Jarenko, how's it going? Hey, we're having a great time up here. Uh, terrific day, a little breezy, but uh, believe it or not, with a uh, little help from uh, some masking tape. We've got these easels and uh, we're getting some really nice work done up here. Uh, I think we might take a quick look at some of them. Okay. Jason. Let's go over to the edge there. Oh, Let's go start over here. Okay. We're going over to this. Can you hold this up for us? You're doing such a nice job. That gets a lot of the ballpark in there in a short time. And uh, concentrating on right field and center field. But uh, that's, that's a good composition. OK. OK. Now we are going to send it back down to Andy, Shoshberg, and Caleb. We're talking about baseball traditions, and one of my favorite baseball tradition I've been doing for about 50 years is baseball cards, collecting them. But we're going to open up a pack of cards in front of everybody, and why don't we do that now, Caleb? Let's open up the pack of cards and take a look at it, and let's go through the cards. Let's see. Got them. Got them. Got them. Need them. Got them. Got them, got them, need them, need them, got them. How about you? Well, you check. Take a look at your cards. Mm hmm All right. Mm hmm Are there any cards here that, that you maybe would be interested in uh, from mine? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would. I'd like that gold card. The gold card. Okay, well, I'm not going to just give it to you. What we're going to do is another tradition, and it's very much a part of pop culture. And in addition to trading, we're going to flip for the cards. And there's a lot of different types of games when it comes to flipping cards. And what we're going to do is a game called matches. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my cards, and then, Caleb, you're going to make a determination whether you want to match my card or not match my card. Now, this is heads. This is tail, okay? So I'll go first. All right, there it is. Now that's heads. Are you gonna match it or are you not gonna match it? You gotta tell me before you flip, buddy. I'm gonna match it. You're gonna match it. Uh, yeah, but it hit the, it's a do-over. It's gotta oh, be a do-over. No. No? no? All right, it's not a do-over. All right, we're gonna talk about another tradition that has taken place for many, many years and it has to do with the seventh inning stretch. Now, a lot of people think that the seventh inning stretch started around 1910 when President Howard Taft attended the Washington Senator's very first game. In the seventh inning, he got up to leave, and as he was leaving, a lot of people out of respect stood up. Well, that's folklore. That really didn't happen. Uh, the other story that a lot of people know about is Manhattan College playing in the Polo Grounds. That was about 1882. And the students were sitting in the stands, and it was a hot day, and they were getting kind of fidgety. Well, one of the uh, teachers 
they noticed that the students were having a problem, so they decided to have them get up and stretch. That is also part of folklore. But the real story happened in 1869. The Cincinnati Red Stockings. The fans stood up in the lucky seventh inning to help their home team get some runs and win the ball game. And how do we know this? One of their players, Harry Wright, wrote a letter and described the situation. Now, do you remember what takes place during the seventh inning stretch? Yes, I do. What is that? Are you seeing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? Right. Take Me Out to the Ball Game was written in 1908. And this was written by Jack Norworth. And he was a writer. And he said, and he decided to, uh, to write the song while he was sitting on a subway in Manhattan. And he saw a sign and it said, Ball Game Today. You know how long it took him to write that song? Only 15 minutes. 15. 15 minutes, and it's been a classic ever since. Well, we're going to set a record here because now it's your turn. Everybody around the country that's watching this broadcast, what we want you to do is stand up just like you do in the seventh inning stretch, okay? Come on, let's all stand up. Now get ready to sing, take me out to the ball game, follow the bouncing ball. And let's listen for the music. And we're going to have more people singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game than has ever sung before. We'll set a major league record. Let's listen for the music. All right, let's go ahead. Peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Woo woo for the home team. Don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes at the old ball game. I don't know about you, Caleb, but I didn't hear Ozzy Smith singing so good. Neither did I. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that later. Yes. Music has played, obviously, a big role in baseball. We just talked about the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, that was written in 1908. The first baseball song was written in about the 1860s, and there have been many, many songs written about baseball. And we're going to share some of those songs with you right now. Now, the first song that we're going to hear is by Frank Sinatra. It's called There Used to Be a Ballpark. Frank Sinatra grew up in New Jersey. He was a big New York Giants fan. And where did the Giants play? Do you remember? Uh, they played in Queens. They played in Harlem, and it was the Polo Grounds. And he talked about a ballpark that was no longer in existence. They tore down the Polo Grounds in the early 1960s. And the people played their crazy game. He was a pretty good singer, wasn't he? Yes, he was. With a joy I'd never seen. All right, the next song that we're going to hear is one of my favorites. It's Van Lingo Mungo. And why is the name so unusual? This is actually a player's name. He was a pitcher. He was a pitcher for the Dodgers and the Giants. He won 120 games. Now, the whole song is written, and the lyrics are nothing but names of baseball players. Big Johnny Mize and Barney McCoskey. Hal Trotsky. Now, the next, next song is, you can read that, can't you? Yes, I can. Center field. Center field. Now, if you go to baseball games, this is played pretty often, and this was written recorded by John Fogarty. You can dance. Yeah. 
Well, obvious, obviously, baseball has played a, uh, an important role in music, and music has played an important role in baseball. Okay, we're going to now go over to the swinging and singing Ozzy Smith. <laughs> Round first and then slide Two outs in the bottom of the night Golden gloves and backflips Bases covered with Ozzy Smith Thanks, Andy. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. You know, I used to catch the bus out to Dodger Stadium, and it wasn't a, the day wasn't complete unless I had the opportunity to have myself a Dodger dog, some popcorn, some peanuts, and a Sprite. Yeah, food has become such a part of baseball. It certainly has. What do we have here? Looks like <laughs> a chili cheese steak, which would be from oh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Looks like some clam chowder, which would be from Boston. And of course, the good old chili dog from Nathan's. Oh, we went to Nathan's while we've been in New York. It's that, delicious. It's very good. Well, what we have here now is we have a hot dog eating contest. And there's big bad Roy Weaver out there. Yay, Roy. <laughs> And there's Jeff Arnett from the Hall of Fame. And what's the young lady's name? Alexis. Alexis. We're going to have a hot dog eating contest. Who do you think's going to win? You know the world know. champion's a little thin guy. Could be. Well, I don't, I don't know. I think Jeff might win this. Well, why don't we come on? Why don't we get set? Well, we're going to count to three, and we're going to see who can eat the most hot dogs. On the count of three. One, two, two three. three. My bet's on Jeff as they come around the corner. It's Jeff picking up the first dog. Big Roy. Big Roy just awed the juicy and get into that dog. Look at Alexis. Alexis, come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> fill it up, fill it up. I don't know, I might be able to beat them in this. Alexis, come on, you gotta pick it up. You gotta pick it up, you gotta catch up. Go, Jeff, go. Go, Jeff, go. Roy, you can do better than that. Faster, faster. The art, folks, the art of eating a hot dog. There you go. Go, Jeff, go. How much time? We have 10 seconds left. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, all right. Good job. Who, who's the winner? Come on over, guys. Come over. Girls. Wow, J Jeff, you're you're holding on to the dogs, Jeff. I'm not going to give mine up. You're not going to give them up. No. Unless you'd like to share one. You, you let me down. You you really did. Alexis, how were the dogs? Good. Were they good? Nothing like a Nathan's hot dog. Mm. Boy, boy, boy. Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. I think she had great technique. Yep. Little bites, that's the yeah. key. Little bites, that's right. You know, yeah. the, the hot dog champion is that little guy yeah. who, who, ate, who, who eats with those little bites like that, but it's gone. He's fast. Yeah. He's very all right. fast. Thank you all for participating. I got to run back over to my other spot. Yep, let's okay. go back that to Jeff fun. and Thank Kelsey. You guys. Okay, Thanks. all right. What's your favorite ballpark food? I think I'd have to say hot dogs. Hot dogs? Well, I'd have to say it's mine, too. Uh, although, in a lot of ballparks today, you know, there's uh, such diversity in our culture and the pop with pop culture and everything. In Arizona, you have Mexican food. In uh, San Francisco, uh, Orlando Cepeda has, like, barbecue. Uh, in St. Louis, we have ravioli. Oh, that sounds big good. In, big in the Midwest. So we're going to toss it back to Jeff. Jeff, have you digested that hot dog yet? <laughs> We'll see. It's still on the way down, Ozzy. It's about right here, okay? But I've got two more to go. I'm going to finish these before the program is over. Let's go back to the phones, Kelsey. Who's on the line? Grant from Indiana. Go ahead with your question. Grant from Indiana.
Grant from Indiana, you're on the line. I am? Yes. Go right ahead, Graham. Who, who was the first person to hit a grand slam? The first person to hit a grand slam. Grant, that's a wonderful question for you to submit to our web forum because we've got a bank of experts, many of them back in the research library at the Baseball Hall of Fame. They could look that up in a second and be able to tell you the answer to the question. Kelsey, back to the phones. Rachel from Indiana, you're on air. Rachel from Indiana. Rachel from Indiana. What is the most expensive baseball card? The most expensive baseball card. Rachel, I'll take a stab at that. Perhaps a card that you heard a little bit about on this program, but one that you probably have read about in other places, is a baseball card issued by a tobacco company in 1909 depicting the famous Hall of Fame shortstop, Hannes Wagner. It's called the Hannes Wagner T206 card that recently sold for auction for about $1.4 million. That's a pretty valuable baseball card. Not the most rare, but certainly one of the most valuable. Let's go to Diego in Indiana. Diego? Yes. Um, how many home runs were made in 2005? Diego, pardon me for eating with my mouth full. I'm still trying to finish these Nathan's hot dogs. They're really good, Kelsey. You want one? Oh. Well. Let's go to our research center back at the Baseball Hall of Fame with that question, Diego. You submit that online, they'll be able to look that up, and again, they can tell you the answer very quickly. We've got another caller on the line, Kelsey. We got Adam from Texas. Adam from Texas. I was, I was just wondering who has been the best, who had the highest batting average? Who had the highest batting average? I'm going to take that one up to Casey in our web forum. Casey, can you tell us off the top of your head who had the highest lifetime batting average? Yes, I certainly can, Jeff. Thanks for sending it up this way. It was Ty Cobb, the great baseball player from the Detroit Tigers, and his lifetime batting average was 367. 367. You think you can hit that well, Jeff? Tim, it's all I can do to finish these hot dogs right now, so <laughs> thank you very much. Let's go back up to the web forum where Casey is with Alicia and Eric monitoring your questions and the web poll. Guys? Thanks, Jeff and Kelsey. We're having a lot of fun up here. The questions are just pouring in this afternoon. And I think we're going to start off with Alicia. What do you have for us, Alicia? OK, I have a question from Johnny. And he wants to know, has there always been spring training? And I can't answer that myself because it started, it was started in 1908. And it was also, in the first site was also made in 1908, and it was invented by the New York Giants. The New York Giants, and we've talked a lot here in Brooklyn about the Dodgers and how they moved to San Francisco after the 1957 season. But it would really be polite of us to mention that the Giants moved the same week from New York out to San Francisco. The Dodgers moved to Los Angeles. I may have said that wrong. So they lost both National League teams in one week. And in fact, the Mets came along five years later, and they wear blue uniforms with orange writing. Blue for the Dodgers and orange for the Mets. I'm going to send it over to Eric here, who's got a question for us. Thanks, Tim. Uh, my question is from my school, George Washington Middle School in Dubuque. Uh, their question is, what is the oldest baseball stadium? And I have the answer for that. It's the Boston Red Sox Field, Fenway Park, and that was built in 1912. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to mention the second one. It's uh, Wrigley Field for the Cubs, and that was built in 1914. Mm -hmm. So, And have you been to either of those? I have been to Wrigley Field. Yeah. Did you like it? It's old, yes. It's I old. like the Ivy in the back. Yeah, there you go, the outfield Ivy. Also, you have a little information from our web poll, right? Yes, I do. Uh, we were talking about movies before, you know, that kind of thing. And we have a poll on the website, what is your favorite baseball movie? Mm -hmm. I don't know, what are you guys' favorite baseball movie? Mine's The Sandlot, but mm -hmm. um, Me too. we have The Rookie, 13%, uh, The Sandlot, 56%, Field of Dreams, 8%, and Angels in the Outfield at 10%, I believe. 10%? Yeah. Yes, and the total vote is 481 votes, so. Well, hopefully at least 19 more people will vote so we can get to 500 votes. Alicia, do you have another question for us? Yes, I do. It is from Aaron and from Burris in, in Muncie, Indiana, and he wants to know what other routines are Abbott and Costello known for? Can we send that one down to Abbott and Costello? Sounds like a good idea to me. We'll send it down to the field. Oh, they're not around at the moment. Okay, so we're going to go down to Jeff Arnett on the field, and he will go on to the next segment, and maybe we can get an answer to that question. Thanks, Alicia. 
All right, Tim, thank you. Kelsey and I back down here on the ballpark, or on the ball field, rather. You sure you don't want to out of this hot dog? Sure. I'll treat you to one after the uh, broadcast is over. We'll go over to Nathan's. How's that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm intent on trying to finish this hot dog before the program is over, but right now we want to make sure that we finish getting to those of you who have questions. So, Kelsey, let's go back to the telephone. Mary from Massachusetts. Mary from Massachusetts. Um, who was the first person on a baseball card? Who was the first person on a baseball card? Andy Strasberg seems to be our resident expert on that topic. Let's go over to Andy and Caleb in the stands. Guys, do you know that answer? Well, there were a lot of players on the first set of baseball cards. Uh, baseball cards, baseball cards first came out in 1886. And what they did is they didn't have the first player. They had all the players that were playing at that particular time. So there were probably 200 or 300 players that were in the first series that were ever published of baseball cards. All right, Andy, thank you for that answer. Let's go back now to Nick, who is on the line from Iowa. Nick, what's your question? Um, what is the largest ballpark that is in use today? The largest ballpark that's in use today. Now, I'm assuming by that question, Nick, you mean how many can a ballpark hold in terms of the number of seats? Casey, up in the uh, web form, do you have an idea what might be the biggest ballpark in terms of seating? I think it's probably Yankee Stadium right here in New York, uh, Jeff. Yankee Stadium holds about 55,000. A few years ago, Cleveland built a new stadium called Jacobs Field, and their old stadium, Municipal Stadium, held 75,000 people. But I think Yankee Stadium is my guess as to the biggest stadium in use today. Thank you, Casey. And of course, we've got 23 million kids like yourselves who are watching today's broadcast, so we're glad you're a part of the show. Back to the phones now, Kelsey, who's Matthew with us? from Iowa. Matthew from Iowa. Yes, I want to know how much money is spent on baseball cards each year. How much money is spent on baseball cards each year? Andy Strasberg, any idea on how much money is spent each year on baseball cards? It must be a lot of money, and I think I spend most of it. How about you, Caleb? Do you buy baseball cards? No, I win them. Oh, yeah. I guess you do. Uh, there are probably thousands and thousands of dollars uh, that are spent on baseball cards. I don't think anybody has actually got an exact number. Great question, but I don't think anybody knows the answer. All right. Now, while I've been munching away on my hot dog, Kelsey, you've been munching away on some Cracker Jack there. I'm interested in knowing what was the prize that you found inside. Any secret decoder rings or uh, spy glasses? Hmm? Ooh, that looks pretty interesting. How many of you back in your classrooms like Cracker Jack for the surprise that you get inside? Cracker Jack is a part of pop culture because it's a traditional baseball food. So there's a lot of things that we've talked about in today's program, more than just movies, music, movies, music and books. Uh, so let's go back up now to the top of Keyspan Park to talk to Andy Jarenko and Isaiah who are still painting away. Guys? Um. All right, while we've wrapped it up, Isaiah, let's take a quick quick look through here yeah. see what we've done today they really worked hard okay. yeah everybody had to go back to school so we we're just going to take a quick look at try to get through all the pictures well they did a lot of creative things here I mean everybody picked out a particular part of the ballpark that they wanted to focus on and uh, considering the short amount of time I think it was uh, marvelous amount of work and really a lot of skill was shown up here today. Um, fortunately, the wind wasn't so bad, so we were able to uh, work pretty much straight through. And I, I think, uh, you know, looking at these paintings, I think anybody who had never been here would get a pretty good feel for, for what the place looks like. Here's a lot of sky and it's a very unusual setting and I think a lot of them really capture that feeling. Okay, Andy, has this inspired you to come back and paint a picture of this ballpark? Yeah, I might do that. It's it's really quite a great place. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I even like it when it's empty. It's it's uh, it's just fun to look at. We don't even need a game going on here, do we? No. <laughs> In fact, it's easier to paint the ballpark without a game going on. But uh. I really like some of these paintings. Andy and Isaiah, thank you very much. Those, okay, Jeff. 
the artwork up there is beautiful. We're really impressed with what you've been able to accomplish in well, just a very short time frame. Yeah, I think they did a great job. They have done a wonderful job. All of the students on today's program have done a wonderful job. We want to thank our wonderful sponsors as well. Obviously, the Best Buy Children's Foundation, Ball State University that produces today's program, everybody back at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, of course, the Brooklyn Cyclones. Kelsey, they've been very, very hospitable to us, haven't they? Yes. They've welcomed us as their guests. They've allowed us to use their entire ballpark. And a special thank you to Sports Illustrated for Kids and Bob Durr. They welcomed you to their offices the other day, and you got to see what's going on down there, right? So let's recap real quick. What are some of the things that we've talked about on today's program? We talk about pop culture. We talk about pop culture and baseball. Mm -hmm. We talk about um, baseball movies, baseball cards. Music. Yeah. Okay. Books. We had gave away some Dan Gutman books to the kids in the stands. Baseball cards. A lot of great things that really make up pop culture. We didn't talk about bobbleheads, did we? No. Do your bobblehead imitation. Very good. Isn't she talented? That's why she's my co-host on today's program. So thank you for joining us today. But we want you to remember that if you've enjoyed today's broadcast, you'll be sure to tune in on December the 6th for the next electronic field trip from Space Center Houston where they're going to be looking at zero gravity and the physics of flight into space. So that's coming up on December the 6th, the next electronic field trip, and we hope that your class will be able to participate in that program as well. Of course, those of you who submitted cards for our baseball contest, they're all winners, aren't they really, Kelsey? Yeah. We're showing some of those winners on our website right now and on the screen, so we're glad that you participated in that program. It's another way that this becomes a live, interactive experience. Kelsey, while well, you've had the opportunity to be here in Brooklyn and to see a little bit of New York City and in this great ballpark, we hope that the kids watching back in their classrooms have enjoyed this experience as well. Don't also forget about Best Buy's hurricane relief because we talked a moment ago about the devastating hurricanes down in the Gulf Coast, and Best Buy is generously helping to rebuild that region. That's information that you can find out more about on our website and also on the Best Buy website of the Children's Foundation. So please participate in those programs. And Kelsey, just because the program's over, does that mean that kids can't continue to go to the website? No. They can still go to our Bank of Experts, they, and they can still go on our website. They can still go to the website. They can continue to submit their questions. Even though the program has wrapped up today, I am just about finished with this hot dog. I think I can polish it off as we conclude the broadcast. How are you doing on those Cracker Jack? Good. Pretty good? You like those? Yeah. And all of the kids who have been in the stands with us today as well, we want to thank the co-hosts of the show, Andy Strasberg, Hall of Famer Ozzy Smith, Andy Jarenko, Bob Durr from Sports Illustrated for Kids, the students who joined us from both Burris Laboratory School in Muncie, Indiana, and also the middle school out in Dubuque, Iowa, and certainly Abbott and Costello. We know that you all enjoyed their routine. Thanks to all of you for joining us in your classrooms today. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We'll see you on the next electronic field trip. Bye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.